Drifters from 1984. The time is 22 minutes to midday. You're very welcome back into the program. Rory on the radio with you until midday. Colin McFadgen is here. We're going to talk all things movies. And I'm delighted to say he's in studio with me this morning. Colin, good morning. Good morning, Rory. It's the most Rory intro. And I was just, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little worried. Do you know when you're a small child and your parents be going, no, we're not putting up the decorations yet. Mm. Christmas isn't here yet. Yeah. You have to you have to calm down. You can't get too excited until a couple of weeks. We still have two weeks to go to Ghostbusters, <laughs> Rory. Okay, you can't peak too early. Well, no, no, this is our last. You know, this is our, like our last meeting before. Yeah. So I have a feeling. I, that- I feel justified. I feel I feel, I, yeah, I feel there'll be a lot of text in between in between times. Have you seen it? Have you seen it yet? Have you seen it yet? Can I come and see it? But yes, it's two weeks. I, it's not. It's it, less than two weeks. It's. It's thirteen days. Oh, it's thirteen yeah. days. Thirteen days. Yeah, right, there you yeah. there you go. Till the new Ghostbusters, and you know, I don't know about you. Um, like you're always excited about them. I think you enjoyed the the last one a little bit more than I did. Yeah, I, I liked it. That was a, that was about it. But there seems to be a vibe of last one was kind of to reestablish the, the the franchise, as it were. It was a sort of a steady the ship. Yeah, steady type the ship. Of effort, yeah. G- introduce younger kids maybe to give them a couple of young kids to look at as well as bring the old people back but this mm. one they seem to be really believing in this is the one that's going to bring Ghostbusters into into the 2020s that yeah. so looking at the ads and looking at uh, all the materials that Sony are sending out it mm. seems that they're pretty confident that this is a good one they've got you just get that that impression yeah you do get that vibe and there, there's no real secrecy I mean remember with Afterlife back yep. in 2020 or whenever it was. It was supposed to be 2020 and ended yep. up in 2021. Yep. But there was lots of secrecy around, you know, the original, you know, yep. Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. Will they, won't they? Will they appear, yep. won't they appear? If they do appear, will they play a big role or a small role or will it just be a cameo? There doesn't seem to be any secrecy around this one. You know, judging by the trailers. No, they're absolutely. There, they're, they're, going, in it, they're playing a big part. The, the real Ghostbusters are there. You, you would wonder how, it, is, how split up it's going to be, but they're certainly doing all the... You know, all the mm. press seems to be as, mu- as much them. The um, effects do look good. And it looks like, you know, kind of a new sc- scary moment. And they're back in New York too, which I think yeah. I think works too, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, yeah. I understood why they did it the, la- mm. the way they did it the last time. Yeah. But now you go, now, this is what I'm talking about. And hopefully, you know, we can put a few of the other things, particularly Ghostbusters 2, out of our mind. Oh, and, and no, some, don't be too hard on uh, Ghostbusters Aside too. from the song. Aside from the Jackie Wilson song yeah. and the Statue of Liberty dancing, I see you're only a young fella. You see, I thank w- you. I went. Thank you're talking you. all about the confirmations uh, at the moment. I Ghostbusters was a movie I went to around for my. I think with my confirmation money. Ghostbusters too, or, or no, Ghostbusters? Oh, the original. I'm very oh, old. Dear, uh, dear. I'm very old. So I had a couple of years to look forward to Ghostbusters too. Hence the right. hence the disappointment. It's like the fourth Indiana Jones movie that we don't really mention very often. Yeah. It's all about the run-up. I had a load of time. Well, you know what happened there, don't yeah. you? You, you, had, you had the original Ghostbusters, which, you know, wasn't really for kids. No, not at all. You know, it wasn't really for it's kids. still quite rude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, even by today's standards, yeah, yeah. it's quite rude. But, you know, then you had the cartoon. Yeah. In, the, in the intervening years, you had the yeah. cartoon, and all of a sudden it became something for kids. So by the time the studio got their hands on all of the original cast and managed to coax yeah. them back, they had to do something for the younger audience. Yeah, and it was I neither... Think it, lo- it might have lost a little bit yeah, of... Yeah, and it was neither fish nor fowl. Even if they totally embraced the younger audience, yeah. it could have worked. But it was trying to kind of keep mm. everyone happy. It did lose a bit of its edginess. Yeah, I yeah. also forget the first one. I know you're a mega fan, but, you know, Bill Murray's behaviour isn't great. <laughs> it's, mm. it, it's not... I thought it was charming as well. And you go, oh, that's not, it's not, it's not great. I was watching it relatively recently, about a year ago, and I was going, oh, I don't think you'd talk to a potential customer like that anymore. <laughs> or certainly they wouldn't stay a potential customer. And um, No, definitely not. There'd be a review on Trustpilot like yeah, that. A- absolutely. But, yeah. you know, it is where... It's, that is actually the movie uh, my lifelong love of Scordy Weaver b- began so and it hasn't changed yeah, exactly, it hasn't yeah. changed at all so that's coming that's just coming right and bang on time mm. the first day of the Easter holidays basically school holidays I, I think it's going to be uh, I, I'm confident about it I think it'll be great fun and I think as you said they've got the mix right it feels of the old nostalgia yeah and a new young cast with the guy from Stranger Things with the cute little sister 
and the, and the right breed of monsters, mm. they're saying as well, it is a bit scary, which is not a problem. Kids like to be scared. Look at your classic Disney's. Scary is not a problem. You have to be appropriately scary. Mm. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. But um, one of the problems with a couple of movies we had lately, like uh, Five Nights at Freddy, and I'll get murdered for saying this, imaginary, mm-hmm. is that they're mm. aiming at 15-year-olds, but it's on the scary level for 12-year-olds, okay. and it's a balanced thing. Whereas a good, scary 12-year-old, kids love it. Kids yeah. love those those sort of things. So more power to it. I hope next time we're talking, you're going to say, I went to see it, Collie, and I loved it. Well, I hope so too. Right. I hope so too. So that is out uh, March 22nd. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hitting theatres. All right, that's Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Right, uh, let's talk. Uh, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a very quick commercial break and then we're going to talk uh, Dune 2. Yeah, because I'll waffle on about this one for ages. I'll let you waffle away. We'll talk after this. Treatment or surgery? Did you know you can receive immediate treatment across the border under the new NI planned healthcare scheme at potentially no cost? Donegal patients are still being treated with us at Kingsbridge Private Hospital Northwest post Brexit. The process is easy and our dedicated team will help guide you through it. So why wait? Contact us today to find out how you can skip the waiting lists and receive treatment in Northern Ireland. Visit kingsbridgeprivatehospital.com because life matters. Dreaming of a getaway this summer? Make it a reality with TUI. Choose from beach or city breaks around Europe and beyond. With hundreds of holiday packages under €600 per person and low booking deposits. Take to the skies from Dublin, Cork or Shannon. Holiday sorted. TUI. Live happy. Offer T's and C's apply. Are you worried about trees on your property? Northwest Forestry Services Bully Buffet are fully insured and have over 40 years' experience in dangerous tree removal, tree felling, surgery, and stump grinding. For peace of mind, call Northwest Forest Services Bully Buffet for a no obligation quotation on 91 32033. Foy & Company, Bally Buffet and Letterkenny are the largest stockists of interior and exterior paint in the Northwest. If you're planning a painting project and need help picking the right colour and brand of paint for your home or commercial premises, call in and ask our qualified paint colour consultants, interior designers and interior stylists. The team at Foy & Company, Bally Buffet and Letterkenny will be delighted to help. Mega Draw on Friday, March 15th is for a guaranteed jackpot of 130 million euro. Ireland's daydream numbers are through the roof. 130 million euro? Time to dream big. The National Lottery. It could be you. Play responsibly. Play for fun. The perfect family day out starts and finishes with a visit to the Donegal Boardwalk Resort, Carrigart. Pack the buggies, bikes and trikes and trek along the boardwalk. Visit the playground and finish with a tasty lunch or dinner in our restaurant, open Wednesday to Sunday. Complete the experience with a stay in our cosy cottages. Explore more at donegalboardwalkresort.ie. This is Saturday Morning Rewind. It's 14 minutes to midday. We are talking all things movies. And Colleen McFadgen is in studio with me to do just that. And uh, we've just been talking Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. That hits theatres March 22nd. Uh, a big release that's in theatres now, uh, Dune 2. Yes, on the weekend of the Oscars, here's my prediction. 2025, yeah. best movie of the year, Dune 2. Oh, that's a uh, bold statement. Yes, and does this Kevin Costner big epic coming out in the summer may or may not uh, get in the way. Now, in the way you're a fanboy for uh, Ghostbusters, I was about the first Dune movie, even though I can't, my Dublin accent means I can't say it quite properly. I always say June, and people yeah. go, oh, it's one about the summer, is it? <laughs> but um, anyway, right. I was a firm believer... As a kid, I was mad into Star Wars and I'd, as I got older, a couple of friends went, oh, you have to read these books. This is where mm. they got all the ideas from, except it's kind of for 
grown ups and I, I read it and I liked it, but I was kind of a bit lost. And I, I'm pretty sure I saw the 1980s mess of an original movie, uh, half of it. Maybe, yeah. uh, maybe it's after. It's sort of got a little bit of sort of cult. Yeah, it has now. now Sting's, sort of, Sting's running around in his underpants and there's loads of. It's up there with sort of Star Beast, that sort ex- of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so when this one came around, I was really interested because the director, Denny Villeneuve, he did tw- uh, uh, Blade Runner 2049, but particularly he did Arrival, which I thought was one of the best. Best movies of that year with Amy Adams because it was a grown up great movie yeah great movie yeah. and, and again, underrated as well yeah and it's used as sci-fi but it's not really about yeah. the sci-fi there's aliens in it but it's mm. not about the aliens it's is a bit it? like we were actually having this discussion yeah. last night it was like Arrival District 9 yeah. all that yeah. sort of yeah. the, they just use the sci-fi as a device mm. to talk about things that are happening now and this movie is very much the same now Dune blew me away I absolutely adored it have you seen the first one? no, no. tried it gave up I can understand how my sister is the same and it does take a while to get into it. I think in the cinema really does make a difference because you know you, you've kind of said well I'm here now anyway yeah. uh, as opposed to Netflix <laughs> but also it's the visuals and the sound but I absolutely adored it and I even though I'd seen it twice in the cinema I watched it again the other mm. day before I watched this and I watched this at 8am this movie was not designed to be watched oh. at 8am but I went to watch so I'd watched three, th- almost three hours of it the night before watching the first one to I refresh. think that was one of the things that put me yeah, off yeah the length of it I went in under duress yeah. because of like two hours and 45 yeah. or whatever I, I, c- I can understand why you're wrong but I can, under- <laughs> I can understand why and then I watched the next one and I just done six hours in it, and all I could think of afterwards is, I want more. I want more. I want to go back to this okay. world. I've. It's such a beautiful looking movie. It's amazing looking. The big uh, screens. You're going. This must be CGI. I know there aren't giant sandworms. Not one bit of it looks like uh, CGI. They've obviously used a lot of real, uh, real effects. If you know what I mean. They've been mm, in the desert. Mm. The acting is top notch from all the cast, and you're watching this guy who's become. You know. He, he starts off as this like privileged prince who kind of becomes this underground warrior. And you go, this is Willy Wonka that I watched a couple of months ago. <laughs> it's like a different actor. Zendaya is amazing yeah. as his sort of link to these the, people. But what I really liked about it is it's for grown-ups. So it's not, as much as I love Luke Skywalker, it's not just Luke Skywalker coming and saving the day. You're going, is this guy good? Giving him all this power, what's going to happen? And not everything goes the way it would in a superhero story. The uh, Austin Butler, who's unrecognisable, we last saw him as Elvis, right? And he's this bold, evil guy. It's actually the character uh, Sting played. And he just re- resonates malevolence all the way through it. It's spectacular. There's a, there's a fight on this other planet where it's like a negative of... Uh, it's all black and white and it's just spectacular wow. I, I've never seen anything like it and one of the things and I, I won't keep on going on about it because it's not for everyone is that they don't explain everything to you you walk away going I think that's what why that happened but I'm right. not sure so you're, walking, make, you're walking away with questions with questions and different interpretations we could watch it together and we walk away and go well that's why he did that and I go well did he do that or was he made do that yeah. it's I think it's a brilliant Some movie. Some people would say that's, you know, that's not a good thing. I, I, know, I, came I, away, I know. I came away with more questions when I went down. Others will say, well, that's really good because it's open to, as you say, yeah, it's open to interpretation. And Christopher Nolan's movies, yeah. particularly things like, uh, uh, you know, T- Tenant and... Oh, um, not Tenant. No, no. I, I, I say Tenant. The, the Leonardo oh. DiCaprio one escapes, the name escapes me at the moment, about the dreams of oh, Killian Murphy. Not, not Insomnia. Um, yeah. Oh, I look it up. I'll yes. have to go. <laughs> yes, I that, exactly that's the one I meant with the spinning top at the end. <laughs> why Why can't it? It just escapes me at the moment. It begins with an I-N. I know that. And No, keep going. Keep yep. talking. Anyway, I, it's like that. So it's not, it won't be for everyone, but I think it's brilliant. Uh, I really would say, even the, even though you didn't like the you didn't like the first one, if you get a chance, Rory, I think with you and with your sci-fi background, uh, I really think if you saw it on a big screen and the biggest screen you can and the Hans Zimmer sound in it, yeah, um, is just like it is at times not so much music as noise. I had some of the most impressive things I've ever seen in the cinema. Wow, I that's a bold statement. Loved it. Okay, I loved it. Now another movie that I know you saw, Inception. 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 Thank God for that. <laughs> I I thought it was we going to sleep. If tonight. I had any hair, I would have had it pulled out. Um, another movie I know you saw, which is the opposite of it, because you know. Wicked Little Letters will is oh, is is brilliant. fine on screen because it's all about the actors and the writing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it really is, yeah. and it's it's such 
you know, it, the approach to it and the story, it's a true story. Yeah. Which I, I was fascinated yeah. by. Um, and there's probably a little bit of social commentary going yeah. on there. Huge amount, well. yeah. You know, it's about uh, a spinster. Were you to say spinster? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yes. Uh, Liz still lives at home with her parents. Yep. She's in her mid to late 40s and she starts getting these letters. But the letters you know, contain profanity yeah. and obscenities. But it's very childish profanity. Yeah, it's, an, it's like yeah. A, a child's idea of what <clears throat> grown-ups swear. If I was allowed yeah. to say any swear words, I would yeah. swear all those. It's if, you know, if your parents told you off yeah. and you went to your room yeah. and, you know, throwing a strop and you decided yeah, big to write stinker them a letter. Sort yeah. of thing, yeah. with swear words in it too. And she's, the blame falls on Jessie Buckley, who I, I've always loved ever yeah, since I saw brilliant. Wild Rose, you yeah. know. And the only problem with this movie is they don't get her to sing. You know, we, anytime... Oh, she does a bit of singing yeah, in the but not, Yeah, she does a bit of singing, but they don't get her to do a song, yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and she just looks at it and goes, I'm Irish. I just swear whenever I want. And, yeah, you I know, don't need to put uh, it in a letter. As I a just man who, who moved to Donegal, I'm very aware of this. Uh-huh. This is certainly the case. And it's just great fun. And I was delighted you liked it so much because I think we mentioned it last time that the reviews were f- weird, that nearly... All the women who reviewed it really liked it, and a mm. lot of the men didn't. And I think they were looking to see a, see it as a mystery and a whodunit, where it's really more about the interaction between well, Olivia Colman and Jessica. For a whodunit, I mean, within about twenty minutes, I thought so too. Yeah, it's no. screaming at you who's actually responsible. Yeah, but it, because of the approach, it's 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 approached like a black comedy. Now there is there you, know, you scratch yep. away yep. the surface, you know. Um, there are some darker elements, yeah, you know, with 100%. the family dy- yep, yep. dynamic uh, and things like that. There's a lot of darker elements to it. But, you know, on the surface, it's it's funny, it's witty, it's charming. Yeah. Um, but I just think, you know, the whole concept that a, that a whole village starts getting these obscene yeah. letters and the utter scandal. Yeah. And, you know, fast forward 70, 80 years to, you know, modern times, yeah. and uh, it's a daily occurrence on social media. Yeah, it's Twitter. People can... It's yeah. basically Twitter, yeah. But um, and we've seen cases of similar stuff of people getting sued by famous celebrities and go, "But you're famous. I do, it doesn't matter what I sent you from the, my anonymous account." People yeah. go, "No, they're still real people. It's the same thing." This this behaviour, maybe Twitter and Instagram have made it easier. This behaviour yeah. was always there in us. Isn't exactly, it mad? Yeah. But yeah. they just use whatever uh, medium Char- was available. Charles Dickens famously yeah. used to get horrendous amounts yeah. of anonymous hate mail. Yeah, well, there you go. There you go. And it's it's interesting too. What I found out was was the attitudes, you know, yeah. towards you know the the woman police yeah. officer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and she must be referred to as woman police officer. And that's a bit that I knew was based on a true story. And I went, oh yeah, but that, the chances of the first <laughs> ever female police officer <laughs> being involved in this. And I googled it afterwards. Went, absolutely yeah, true. Yeah, absolutely true. Ha- we're only allowed handcuffs at the discretion yeah, yeah. Of, of the the superintendent. Madness. I think people will love it. And I think yeah. you know for as much as I love Dune as much as you love Ghostbusters and that's the thing people in that sort of movie just doesn't appeal to I think they could really like this Wicked is an Little ideal Lettuce. movie yeah. you know you're, you're at a loose end on a, on a Sunday you know Mother's Day the car- bring exactly. your mother she knows those words I know she pretends she doesn't yeah. she does <laughs> she does and she enjoys and she knew them before you were around as well and used them quite yeah, yeah exactly maybe yeah, about yeah. you yeah. sometimes so, so. Uh, quite a bit on offer there I mean we have obviously Ghostbusters Dune 2 on the way uh, Wicked Little Letters still there yeah we'll there Still there. I think it's going to hang around for a while because there's not a lot of similar movies out for yeah. a while. We're getting all the blockbusters and um, Easter movies. We've Kung Fu Panda 4 coming out soon. So that would be for the holidays. Okay. So some of the more grown-up movies like Wicked Little Letters will hang around for a while because right. and people who like those movies, they come on a slower thing. As I said, Mother's Day tomorrow. Oh, can I also mention as well, Mean Girls, Paramount are doing a special thing that all... All cool moms go free tomorrow oh, oh. To, to Mean Girls. Now, if you want to tell your mom she's not cool, you're a braver man than me. Yeah, but you're he, braver, stupid, all, to, all yeah. the cinemas, I think, are doing it. So it's a free entry to all wow. m- all mums. All mums tomorrow. And Mean okay. Girls musical is really good fun. I really yeah. enjoyed it. I know you weren't a fan of the original, but you're mm. wrong about that too. <laughs> so next month... I will let you watch Ghostbusters, but you have to watch Dune and you have to watch Mean Girls. that's my homework. Okay, we'll do that. That's an agreement. Carly, as always, thanks so much. Uh, We will talk to you in (gasps) April.
See you then. I know, scary. Uh, and that's where we have to wrap things up for this morning's programme as well. A few quick shout-outs to do before we go. A very happy birthday to Ailish Higgerty, Shanice Orr, uh, Anne-Marie Fisher, uh, and also to Kira and Timmy Lunn and uh, family, and also to Mary and Gerald Ford and the family, and Isabel Rogers from John Wallace this morning. And Rory, can you please play a request for JJ Kelly, whose birthday is tomorrow. A big birthday for JJ at 75 years old. So best wishes to you, JJ, from all of your friends at... Bally Liffin Golf Club. And that is where we wrap it up for this morning. Uh, Michaela is up next with a news update for you. Paul McDevitt here with the Saturday Shuffle, and I'll talk to you next weekend from 10 a.m. Highland Radio are celebrating another birthday. We are inviting you to join us for our 